It's no surprise just how infamous the Potter name is within the wizarding world today. In fact, at one point, there really wasn't a wizard alive who didn't know the story of the boy who lived, Harry Potter, and his counterpart, Lord Voldemort. However, the Potter name isn't just synonymous with Harry. It stretches way back to the time of Ignotus Peverell, owner and believed original creator of the Cloak of Invisibility, who also lived in the time of a man named Linfrid of Stinchcombe. In this video, I'm going to take you through the entire origins of the Potter name and the bloodline. I'm going to shed some light on the explanation of how the magical bloodlines work, and once and for all, I'm going to clear up the constant debate of Harry Potter's blood status. So let's take a look. Before we go into depth, let's look at how Pottermore describes the Potter family. The Potter family is a very old one, but it was never until the birth of Harry James Potter at the very forefront of wizarding history, contending itself with a solid and comfortable existence in the backwaters. Potter is not an uncommon Muggle surname, and the family did not make the so-called Sacred 28 for this reason. The anonymous complier of that supposedly definitive list of pure bloods suspected that they had sprung from what he considered to be tainted blood. Now tainted blood is something I'll talk about later on. The Potter family descended from a 12th century wizard named Linfrid of Stinchcombe, a locally well-beloved and eccentric man, whose nickname, the Potterer, changed over time to Potter. Linfrid was a vague and absent-minded man whose Muggle neighbours often called upon his medicinal services. None of them realised that Linfrid's wonderful cures for pox and egg were actually magical. They all thought him a harmless and lovable old chap, pottering about in his garden with all his funny plants. His reputation as a well-meaning eccentric served Linford well, for behind closed doors he was able to continue the series of experiments that laid the foundation of the Potter family's fortune. Historians credit Linford as the originator of a number of remedies that evolved into potions still used to this day, including Skelligro and Pepperup Potion. His sales of such cures to fellow witches and wizards enabled him to leave a significant pile of gold to each of his seven children upon his death. So, what's the connection to the Peverell name? Well, that begins with Hardwin Potter, Linfrid's eldest son. He married a beautiful young witch from the village of Godric's Hollow, who went by the name of Yolanth Peverell. She was the granddaughter of Ignotus Peverell, and as the eldest of her generation, in the absence of male heirs within the Peverell family, inherited her grandfather's cloak of invisibility. It was, as Eolanth explains to Hardwin, a tradition in her family that the possession of this cloak remained a secret, and her new husband respected her wishes. From this time on, the cloak was handed down to the eldest in each new generation. We next stop at Ralston Potter, a later descendant of the Potter family who served as a member in the Wizengamot from 1612 to 1652. He was a supporter of the International Statute of Wizarding Secrecy, instead of wishing to declare war on Muggles, like the more militant members of the Wizengamot. Now, the International Statute of Secrecy was exactly that, international, not just Britain, all over the world. And when it comes to Britain as a home, not all Potters settled there. Abraham Potter was a member of a branch in the family which immigrated at some point before 1693 to the United States of America. Once there, he became one of the original 12 Aurors trained and appointed by the first President of the Magical Congress of the United States of America. It can be assumed that Abraham was educated at Ilvermorny School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, but it really depends on the age he was when he actually arrived in America. It could be entirely possible that he attended both Hogwarts and Ilvermorny. The house Abraham was sorted into remains unknown, and his distant relation to the infamous Harry Potter would not be uncovered until centuries later by eager genealogists. So let's skip a few generations ahead to Henry Potter, known as Harry to his friends, the great 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 grandson to Ralston Potter, who I previously mentioned. Henry also served in the Wizengamot from 1913 to 1921. He condemned the Minister for Magic at the time, 
Archer Evermond for forbidding the magical community from helping the Muggles fighting during the First World War. His outspokenness on behalf of the Muggle community, along with the fact that Potter is also a relatively common surname in the Muggle world, led to the exclusion of the Potter family from the Sacred 28 list. From Henry we have his son Fleamont, who attended Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry and was sorted into Gryffindor House. Most of his classmates there teased him about his name. Fleamont was the maiden surname of Henry's mother, who was concerned that the name would eventually die out. So Henry suggested naming their son Fleamont, therefore the name would stay valid. After graduating, Fleamont took up a potionary career in which he invented Sleek Easy's hair potion. The sale of such a product could droop up the already vast amount of family gold. He retired with his wife Euphemia a few years later and then sold the company as a whole at a vast profit. James Potter, Fleamond and Euphemia's only son, was born late in the couple's lives on March 27, 1960. By that time, his parents were both elderly even by wizarding standards, but they pampered and cherished their child according to the point where he became a proud yet arrogant boy. However, James was still considered a good person. He broke generations of tradition when he married Muggle-born Lily Evans, ending the family's pure blood line. His son Harry became the first half-blood Potter in centuries. Now so many of you, even to this day, struggle to understand just exactly how the bloodlines work, and I consistently see the same argument being made time and time again over whether Harry is half-blood or pure blood. The argument pretty much goes like this. But wait, if James Potter is pure blood and Lily is Muggleborn, then Lily is still magical. So that means Harry is pure blood because he's born to two magical parents. Well, I can 100% confirm that Harry Potter is a half blood. A pure blood wizard is defined as a wizard born to two magical parents who were born both to two magical parents before them, of which those two were born to two magical parents before them, meaning it must go back no less than three generations of all magical parents, all born to parents of magical stature. Now the three generations rule is where the tainted blood phrase comes from earlier, because it allows the creation of a pure blood line, or the repair of it, so to speak. Now I'm going to explain some examples of different blood types and how they apply to the bloodline. So, if a pure blood and a pure blood conceive a child, then that child is pure blood, plain and simple, straightforward. If a pure blood and a half blood conceive a child, that child is half blood. If a pure blood and a muggle born conceive a child, that child is half blood. If a pure blood and a muggle conceive a child, then that child would still be considered half blood. And finally, if a half blood conceives with either a muggle or muggle born, then the child is still considered half-blood. Basically, there is no possible way a pure-blood child can be born unless it is to two pure-blood parents. But here's the catch. The repairing of the bloodline is possible because of the three generations rule. A half-blood can actually restore the family line to pure-blood. Two half-bloods conceiving a child, followed by three generations of all magical breeding, basically creates a pure-blood line. And this, as I said, is where the tainted blood phrase comes from. For example, let's take the Malfoys, who strictly would only breed with other purebloods. So if we look at the Malfoys' point of view in terms of how they'd view tainted blood, let's say another family considered pureblood had a fracture in its line of purity with a half-blood child born. Then see the line eventually repaired due to the three generations rule, the Malfoys would consider that line tainted, but still accepted as pureblood. The last example I'll give will be Harry's family. Harry is half-blood and he married Ginny, a pure-blood. Therefore, their children are half-bloods. It would have to be their children's grandchildren. So Albus Severus' grandchildren, for example, that would have only bred with either half or pure-bloods from a non-Muggle-based line, basically excluding Muggles and Muggle-born partners. That would see the Potter line become pure once more. Thank you so much for watching, I truly truly appreciate your support. Everyone, notifications of uploads are more important than ever, so please if you haven't already, turn those notifications on to make sure you're notified the moment my video goes live. 
Making videos is what I love to do, it's my dream and my passion, however it does cost time and money to produce this content, so if you have a dollar to spare to support me on Patreon, in exchange for some exclusive unseen content, then you can click the Patreon link below or at the end of this video. Please only support me if you can afford it. And make sure to follow me on Instagram at instadnj and on Twitter at potterfolklore. Check out my other videos appearing on screen and please make sure, most importantly, to hit that subscribe button. Thanks again everyone and please have a great day.